Next story involves the mailman. I am talking about Carl Malone. Only oh, difference is I thought he was the mailman for mailing in baskets. Turns out he's the mailman because he liked to send sperm to 13 year olds. Take a look at this story right here. Boy, I, I, I Larry, I can't make this stuff up, man. I can't Carl, make it Carl, the mailman Malone is a pedophile and it took me all these years to find out. Let me break it down for you guys. Carl Malone has a son named Demetrius Bell, who is a former NFL offensive tackle who played for the Buffalo Bills. Demetrius was born in 1984 to Gloria Bell, who was 13 years old at the time. Carl Malone was 20 years old at the time when he impregnated Gloria. Yes, Carl Malone got a 13 year old pregnant at the age of 20. At this time, he was playing college basketball at Louisiana Tech, a college student having sexual relationships with the middle schooler. Absolutely disgusting. Since Gloria Bell and her family didn't have much money, they kept this on the down low till Malone made it to the NBA knowing they wouldn't get money out of him while he was still in college. Once he made it to the NBA, the Bell family sued Malone for child support and asked for $200 a week from Malone. What did Carl do? Well, Carl did nothing. A man in the NBA making millions of dollars who got a middle schooler pregnant couldn't pay $200 a week for child support. The case ended up going to court and the judge decided that Carl would pay $125 a week. God damn, Carl Malone, you are a piece of shit, man. What makes this story even more twisted is that Malone had told his son that he never wanted a relationship with him for obvious reasons, but that has change and Carl Malone now wants to start having relationships with his son. Man, if I was Demetrius, I'd be like, all right, bet, let's meet up and just give him an uppercut. Just sleep his pedophile ass. This one caught me off guard because throughout my life, Carl Malone seemed to be respected and liked around the NBA, and that's what makes this story so compelling. In the culture we live in today, people are getting exposed and canceled for way less harmful things. Why is Malone still viewed as a respectable NBA Hall of Famer? I hope this brings light to a piece of shit human that should be looked at as a pedophile, not an NBA Hall of Famer. And you guys know this stuff came in lieu of Michael Jordan's The Last Dance. We had people that work around and in sports saying things like this with the final chapters of The Last Dance ending in Utah. I think it's a good day to remind everyone that when Carl Malone was 20, he had a baby with a 13 year old teen and never had a relationship with the boy. Um, and this is the boy. You know, he has a, he has a little bit of a resemblance to Carl, a little bit. Um, Larry, uh, uh, bro, I got I got to get this into you, man. Um, when when you hear these stories, now we just got finished lamb basting little Bootsy for what he said. We ain't been right. too long getting on R. Kelly for what he did. It don't matter when it happened, even though time has, you know, the the the, the child is an adult now. The act right. was still wrong no matter when it occurred. And then to further try to distance himself, he didn't want to have anything to do with the kid. And I guess now whatever statutes are probably in place, you can't go after Carl Malone for statutory or anything like that, even though you have proof in the form of DNA that he stuck his penis in a 13-year-old. Larry, what's up? Well, I'm not sure what the statutes are, but... Uh, and the reason why is that I think if you are in, I'm not sure where, I'm not sure what state they were in. I think they, was it Utah they said that it was in or no, I'm not sure where they were Did, in. He, he went to school at Louisiana State. So maybe yeah, somewhere so, around there. I'm not sure. It didn't say where he was at. Yeah. I'm not sure what the statute is out there. Cause some, I, I know it's different for child abuse or, or, um, or child molestation versus statutory rape and it and it depends on the age and so if she and that age that that age usually goes from like 12 to 13 it jump it, it jumps from from uh molestation to statutory rape Much so Muchella saying it's alabama alabama okay so yeah but i'm not sure so i mean if like if for instance if he got her pregnant at 13 and she had the baby at 13 it might have been where it could have been statutory rape, and then there probably is nothing they can do about it. But I think the, but I think with um, it, with child molestation, which it probably would have been if she was twelve. I think that all those laws, I think they're, I think they're allowing people to go back and actually, and actually either seek, um, either criminal charges or at least they're they're allowing people to bring civil charges, you know, against people. Because they're trying, they have gone back and said, "Hey, it's unfair to have a statute of limitations on people that were kids because they're kids. They don't even, you know, 
And some some states have said that there's no statute of limitations. Some people say the statute of limitations doesn't start running until the to the child that was molested turns 18 or turns 21. So it really it it really I guess it depends on I guess it depends on when it happened for in her life if she got if if he was having sex with her before she was 13 because I think that at that point it was molestation instead of statutory rape and then at that point maybe the clock starts running after she she becomes an adult and if that's the case maybe she still has time maybe she can go after him and you know even if she can't go after him criminally maybe she can go after him civilly you know you know probably at at this point that a men's has looks to be that he's made amends with that son i'm sure the i'm sure that mother don't want to do nothing to ruffle feathers or create tension more between that son and and the father and the father now right you can't it's amazing that the guy came out turned out to be a professional athlete on top of that that's just incredible did you see that picture of carl malone's family and lineage look at this picture Man, huh, when you get your hooks in the athlete, you get their asses to spit out as many money makers as you can. Look at that family. Beautiful yeah, he does little have family. Like he's got plenty of kids in there. Beautiful little family. But, you know, no matter when this type of thing happens, ladies and gentlemen, it's wrong. I don't care if it happened in 1700. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. And un- unless the mother and the son have said, you know what? Forget it. Just let it be. And we don't know what Carl Malone has done financially since then either. Because he had to know this was going to come back up when the Jordan documentary came out. When he heard that this documentary was coming out, he had to know that this was going to come back up with him. So maybe he's made some financial um, amends with the family or whatever. But if a district attorney really wanted to be an a-hole, they could possibly come after this man. But apparently judges was paid off from what i'm understanding and nothing is going to happen at this point because remember carl malone has been a starch advocate of the nra other republican issues and other republican demeanors and i'm not saying he's being protected by them but something prevented him from getting the r kelly treatment Either way you look at it, well, it's still sad. Well, it was this happened a long time ago too. You have to remember this was this was not in today's era. So this mm-hmm. is, you know, this happened a long time ago. Even when even when R. Kelly stuff happened, you know, which was far more recent. The first the first go round where he had the thing with the uh with the girl, the whole pee scandal. I mean, let's not forget he got off on that. I mean, the dude's on videotape peeing on a 14-year-old girl, and he got off. So, I mean, even then, it was, you know, getting R. Kelly. R. Kelly didn't get much of a treatment. He had to go to court, and he won. That's true. I mean, so, That's true. That's true. I mean, and they, they and they had his ass on camera, and they, he still got yeah. away with it. Like, bruh, it's like, whoa. So, you know, the whole thing, this whole thing with, with I mean, today, if it happened, if this had happened today, like right now it would be a different story i think but mm-hmm. you know 30 years ago i'm just not sure that i'm just not sure there was enough people that cared there was probably a lot of people that that looked at her as a gold digger because she waited until until he was in the right. nba mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i mean there's there's a lot of people i'm sure that had feelings about stuff and they probably beat her down so bad that she felt like there was nothing she could do and we know how those how people protect those athletes. I mean, these athletes are commodities, and mm-hmm. they're generating a lot of rich white people a lot of money. And so they're going to protect their assets until that asset is no longer producing for them, or until that per, until that asset becomes a liability, and then they just toss them off to the side. So, if you're a dumbass who goes and robs a bank, and now all of a sudden you're you know you're you're ruining that 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 rich white owner's brand, then, you know, they'll get rid of you. But if they still see value in you, they'll keep you on. They'll pay off who they have to pay off. And, you know, and they'll let you keep working. So yeah. uh, it would be different today. You know, back then, they just wanted them to keep playing, keep winning, keep earning. And that's what they wanted. So, and I'm not surprised by it. You know, I feel bad mm-hmm. that, I feel bad that the the woman only got $125 a week. I mean, that's, I'm assuming that's because she was in Alabama. What she should have done is moved herself to California 
and then went to the family courts in California and applied for child support, you know, went and asked for child support out there because they would have they would have gotten she probably would have gotten, you know, if he was making ten million dollars a year, she probably would have got one or two of them. And, and the, the thing the thing is, man, in a situation like this, the onus has got to be put on the person that's above 18 to make sure you understand how old the person is you're dealing around with that's younger than you. You mean to tell me he didn't know this girl was in like middle school or ninth grade? Come on, man. Well, I, I will say this. I will say this. I have seen plenty of young girls who look and act a lot older. I you have can, too. I mean, you can be, I have too. I have you can, too. You can easily mistake a 13-year-old girl for an 18-year-old. And if you're, you know, if somebody, if you're 20 years old, if you're 20 years old and you're in college and some girl's coming around to the to the university and she's hanging out with older friends and they and and she may, I don't know what she I don't know if he didn't ask or he just assumed or if she told him that she was 18 or maybe he knew she was younger and didn't care. I don't know what their situation was. So I don't want to try and put anything on anybody. I'm just saying I can understand if, for instance, if you're up at the university and some girls coming around up to the dorms or coming around to the parties and she's up there with older people and you just assume that she's older because she's there and she mm -hmm. looks older. I can see how you would make that mistake. You know, I, I, I can mean, too. I can too. But the origination of the issue is still going to be if the worst happens and the chick gets pregnant and somebody decides to press charges, who's up the creek? Who are they going to well, say? Of course he's up the creek. He should have been up the creek. I mean, exactly. You know, but I mean, I feel okay. you because I know someone whose situation like that happened to, and they got they went up the creek and they had to do right. um, some probation because the chicks was at a party. They were sixteen. He was in a college party. He did not know that these girls were underage. He smashed one of them. Got pregnant. Do I need to even say these were Anglo Saxons? And the parents was not having it when they found out who the daddy was. And right. And even though the daughter didn't want to have any legal proceedings, the parents pressed charges. And in essence, he got a slap on the wrist. He only had to do a year probation. Hmm. But this was yep. this was this was a clear case of they was at a party because the girl admitted she was at a party. The friend said she was at the party, and they had video camera of them at the party. So legitimately, right. he's thinking this girl is a college student. And you know what the, the attorney said? Did you check her ID? He said no. Yeah. He said no. Yeah. I mean, that's the unfortunate part. A lot of people are stuck with this thing where, you know, I mean, you do have to, it's like you have to ask if you're, but it's like if you're, if you're at a party and you think that, you know, everybody's there is of age and you're, you're, you're drinking and you're, and you're, and you're messing around with some girl and then all of a sudden turns out she's not the age that you thought that you thought she was all of a sudden you're responsible and, and and this is part of the problem that i have with our judicial system when it comes to the way they deal with men versus women is mm -hmm. that if you're a guy and you're out there and you're hanging out and you're drinking and doing whatever you're still fully responsible for all of your actions but if you're a woman and you're out there drinking and something happens to you you're not responsible the other person that is responsible you're not responsible unless no, you no, no, no. No. Car, but if no. you go out and you get drunk at a party and you sleep with somebody and that person you decide tomorrow that you don't like that person and you don't want to and you don't want to have and and so you assume oh okay well i got drunk and i had sex with this person and now i regret it now all of a sudden it's rape well what if that person had been drinking too what if that person was like, I wasn't really fully aware of what I was doing. Why isn't it considered rape on her part? She took advantage of me. She was the aggressor. I didn't even, I was just there, you know? And, hmm. but hmm. the guys end up, it ends up to being the one that's responsible. So it's, you know, it's unfair in a lot of ways how that works out. And I think that, I think that if there's a guy who's a predator and he's up there obviously trolling middle schools or he's online trying to hook up with young girls, you know, or if he goes over to his family's house and he knows there's a young cousin or something and he's and he's pre he's preying on a younger on a younger person, male or female. I get then that you definitely go after them. But I mm -hmm. think at I think also if you have a young girl, especially these some of these young girls that look older, they act older, they they 
they dress older, they're hanging out with older people and they show up to an event where everyone should be of age. And then they end up hooking up with a dude that's an adult. I'm not saying, I'm not necessarily thinking that, that that guy ought to be held responsible if he truly didn't know. And the only, and, and I, and you have to be careful with this because you don't want to create a climate where all of a sudden now you have these pedophiles saying, Oh, well, let's bring these young girls into places where we know you should be old uh, an adult. And then we have the excuse to say, Oh, we thought they were of age. You don't want that happening, you know, and, but you do have to, you do have to have some sort of you, some, you have to make some sort of accommodations for people who truly didn't know somebody who was deceived, especially if there's girls that are running around talking about, yeah, I'm 18. I've seen plenty of girls out there that run around and say, oh, I'm 18, knowing that they're in high school, that they're 15 or 16. I don't mean, it's been years uh, look, since that's happened. Look, it's been going on. I'm assuming it I, still happens today. It was going I, on when I was in I'm, high school. I'm with you. I don't deny that that's the truth. That's not really happening. But because of that double standard, fellas, you have to ID. What Larry's saying, there is a double standard. And the Me Too movement is supposed to be fighting for equality, not just for when it fits their narrative, but equality across the board. So that these but type of not. situations, yeah, well, that, but the mantra is supposed to be for that. It's supposed but to be. They're not. What, they're not in most cases, but it's supposed to be for that. And no matter what happens, Larry is speaking that it does have a double standard. And because that double standard is still the reality, the onus is on you, someone who's older and you're at a party or you're about to smash and they you have an inkling that they're younger you better get some id and probably take a picture of it and if they don't right. want to show you no id then you don't smash you go home grab some lotion and watch tv right Period. and Con, you know connie 19 up here pop her thing up there i want to i want to i want to address this right here which one so connie 19. so connie 19 says that when that 12 or 13 opens her mouth to talk to you you will know her age Connie 19, I agree with you if you are taking somebody out to dinner. If you're out to dinner and you're trying to have a conversation with someone, yes, you're going to know if they're talking about freaking Rainbow Bright and Strawberry Cheesecake, you know. My Little Pony. My Little you Pony. Know? Yeah. My little, if, you're, if they're up there and they're and you're trying to talk to them about regular stuff and that's where their mind is and they don't seem like they, they're that You can tell a 12 or 13-year-old if you take them somewhere and have a conversation with them. If you're on a college, if you're on a college campus or in a college town and you're having, you're at a party in some house or apartment and you, everyone's drinking, you don't, you've had the time there's music playing. It's too loud to hear anybody. You're basically just sort of, yeah, okay, whatever. And next thing you know, two people are making out and then you're out. Do you want to go upstairs? Yeah, let's go upstairs. And then that's that. There's no real conversations happening. You know, this is... I mean, I don't know what their scenario is, but this is oftentimes these things happen. It's not like you're on a date with someone, you know, you just it's a it's a smash. It's a hookup. And oftentimes people aren't having real conversations in those times, in those in those moments. If you did, you're right. You probably would know. But I don't get me wrong. I'm not making excuses for these dudes. I'm just saying, bros, you have to protect yourself by all means, whether that's ideal people. Well, yep. if a girl is drunk and she wants to have sex with you, you just simply have to be like, look, I really want to. And hopefully you'll feel that same way tomorrow when you're sober and we and we can hook up then. You just have to make those sacrifices at times because otherwise, you know, you get you think you're getting in. You think you're getting this hot chick that's going to be, you know, that's all willing, except she's drunk. And the next day she says she didn't know what she was doing. Well, that moment could cost you the rest of your life, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and, and part of it is recognize the devil standard. Don't you don't have to like it? Just recognize that it's there and, and act accordingly. So, and and to Connie's point, there are there are some best way I can put it. There are some 16 and 17 year olds that have had the kind of life and experiences where they can talk to you about certain things and come off older than 16 or 17. But right. at the end of the day, the onus still falls on the man to make sure right. he knows because you're risking it all. Yes, and, in and, some cases, there is still a double standard. But right. you're and risking you also it. Have to consider, you also have to consider the, the maturity level of, of the person that, the 20 year old guy, because it's not like, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 40s. 
I mean, I've been around the world. I've traveled to to dozens of countries. I've been and I've I've sat down and had conversations with politics. I've photographed presidents. I've done all kinds of stuff in my life that is I still think is amazing. And I can tell if I'm talking to a teenager because I am sort of a worldly person. Not to, I'm not bragging or anything. It's just my life experience. I know when someone else has not had that life experience by talking to him. So you may have a 20 year old who just hasn't had any real experience and his mindset and his maturity level is just not there yet because he just hasn't matured yet. He hasn't had a need to or a desire to and he hasn't had any real world experience to talk about anything else except for Madden or you know whatever was on TV last night. And that may be the same place that that 13 year old is at too. So when they're talking, it may not occur to him, oh, she might be 13 because they're basically in the same space. So you do have to take those precautions and check IDs, unfortunately, you know? But man, 13, man, that one is way down there. I, I might concede someone who's 17, maybe 16, but 13 and 12, I mean, I can remember girls when I was 13 and 12 in the schools I was going at. Only one female had breasts, one. And guess what? She got pregnant in the eighth grade. The one female in my middle school that had breasts got pregnant. See, I went to when I was in middle school. By the time I was in sixth grade, there were girls already that had huge breasts. I mean, I, re I remember that was like a big thing. It was like when we came back from summer, it was like we were in like fifth grade and starting sixth grade, we started a new school for middle school. And when we came back, it was like, holy crap, half the girls have boobs, you know? And it wasn't what? even like they had like little training bras. These were women. These were like grown women breasts, you know? And oh, man. I mean, it was and like that. It was like that going forward. It was just like, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, I can see very easily how someone could make that mistake. If they're not looking for it, if they're in a place where people, where they believe people are of age, I can see how someone could easily make that mistake. I mean, you look at these guys now, you know, you look at some of these guys now, if you take a, if you take a young kid who's say 15 years old and he's in high school, he's an athlete. I mean, if you don't, if you don't look at his baby face and his peach fuzz, and you just look at his physicality. Some of these dudes that work out all the time because they're playing football or whatever, and they're six four because they're playing basketball. Some of these guys look like grown men, you know. Some hey. of them look like grown men. It's a lot. I think it's a lot. It's a lot less with boys than with girls because boys take longer to physically develop. But there are a lot of boys out there that look much older than they are. I mean, I've had, when I was in high school, we had friends, we had guys that can grow full beards and we used to have them grow full beards. We'd say, don't shave, start on Monday, don't shave. So on, so on, you know, I didn't tell them this because I didn't drink in high school. But people would say, don't shave on Monday. So on Friday, you'll have a beard. You can go into the store and go score and they'd go buy beer for people. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, then we're going to move on. In eighth grade, I looked like a grown man, but you know why I looked like a grown man? Because every morning before I went to school, I would go get a black magic marker and color a mustache, and ain't nobody know nothing. And the girls was loving it. I mean, oh. I, was color I was coloring that bitch like it was just for me. Just coloring and coloring and coloring. And I get to school, I popped in there with a mustache, and I was getting so many Mac Daddy moves, man. It was nuts. Oh my god, comedy. <laughs> 